I'm back for, oh my gosh, um, <clears throat> day 13. Grind 13. Have you seen this? Oh, wow. You know what? I should probably be using my sword. Whoa, cow. Holy cow. Whoa. What is all this? Wow. You see this? Check this out. Isn't that crazy? Oh, I forgot it's not open. Whoa! You bashed it. Whoa! Holy cow, where are these guys coming from? I do love the rain, though. The rain is really nice. It was in, um... Jeez, a couple weeks ago. An Italian island. I'm not sure which how many of them there are, but an Italian island got hit with, I think, 17 inches of rain in 90 minutes. Which is unheard of. Absolutely sick amount of rain. And they did. They suffered some damage for that. Probably a few deaths, I think. Which is very unfortunate. Um, how did I end up on that top? Oh, rain. Sorry. Oh, you know what? I need more storage. You fools. I need more storage. Boink, boink, boink. So, we are on about economics still. I apologize, but I don't apologize. It's an important topic, and unfortunately yesterday I did not do a very good job of keeping it concise. Instead, I ended up on a bit of a tangent. That's not right. No, it was, it was in context. It wasn't a tangent, but it was not where I wanted to go exactly. But I probably should reiterate because it's still fairly important. Can you put some of this away? Away, away, away. Potion of regeneration, not gonna do me much good. Oh, we got another night vision. Right, right, let's, let's do this. Back downstairs, do a little bit more mining. We need endless supplies of Well, here, actually, let me pull up my notes. Hey, look at my notes. Ah, can I see my notes? Can I see my notes? Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, sorry about that. So, yeah. Yesterday, I sort of described... I described... I'm doing such a good job, aren't I? <laughs> I suck. Um, I described the economic ecosystem, I guess you could say, behind why right now working people are a very low priority. And in fact, the 1% are the entire point of our having an economy right now, is to serve their needs. And as you might imagine, that's kind of unhealthy. And you know, we, we had periods in the past where we had regulations in place, uh, basically brought about because the last time rich, you know, the upper crust had this much power and influence, they wrecked the place, absolutely destroyed the country, uh, Great Depression, people dying all over the place. I mean, you can't really compare it to civil war or any kind of war, but it's still, it was a terrible thing. And it was, it was brought about by extremely sociopathic people whose sociopathy gave them an unfair economic advantage over people who are more honest than they are. Or at very least, people who are not willing to hurt others for personal gain. And those people will never go away. And, to, and unless there comes a point where we identify and heal the part of their brain that allows them to be sociopaths or figure out that it is, in fact... You know, like a nurture thing, and they are trained to be sociopaths. Whoops! Wow. Uh, and and prevent that through good schooling. Don't know. That's maybe it's a little bit of both. Regardless, it's a problem, and we had dealt with it before through intelligent, um, an intelligent combination of regulations that essentially had the these people regulating themselves so that we didn't have to do it. And that was through a combination of basically three things that I've been able to identify. And those are the top marginal tax bracket, which was very high between 70 and 90% for several decades. And I might add, 
our most stable and economically viable decades in all of American history happened to somehow accidentally coincide with this time when we had rules that effectively refereed the ultra-rich into good... Um, look at this. This is awesome. Basically, oh, uh, into behavior that was good for the economy, not just for themselves. And the thing is, during that time, they were still rich. They were still doing just fine. They were just... They couldn't run away with the economy. It was basically all there was. And now if you were to ask them today, that is a crime against them. How dare you regulate us, you know? But the fact of the matter is you wrecked the place last time we let you define the rules and run the game yourself. Anyways, um, there were a couple other things involved. Um, the lack of tax havens. I'm, I can't tell you it was the absolute lack of tax havens, but it was definitely, compared to now, a great lack of tax havens. They were just, they didn't exist in the volumes that they do today. And so, they, they couldn't hide the money. They couldn't take it for themselves. They had to actually keep it in their businesses or their communities, which meant that the working people had a lot more spending money, and that's essentially what really fuels the economy, was the, the people who can spend. Not the people who were earning, but the people who were spending. Um, oh, look at that, even more. This is ridiculous. And I just lost my... Oh, that was strange. <gasps> <gasps> cool! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I know what sort of thing is right in there. Will my sword even make it through this? Oh, 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 oh. Bear with me, folks. I, I'm, my recap is going too long anyways. Go away! Thank you. Oh. Oh, my God. I know people who would like to have these. <gasps> huh? Huh. Interesting. Thirteen. Isn't that the same one as always? Oof. I better take these with me. And you know what? I don't need to waste a good pick on this. So... Oh, and, and the third regulation was tariffs. Basically, trade tariffs against other countries whose purpose wasn't to be mean to other countries, but to ensure that uh, external labor and external products were not more attractive to uh, local employers and, and you know business owners than local labor and local products. They were effectively equalized or even given a slight advantage so that people would choose local over foreign. And... You say, well, it's mean to China and stuff. Granted, at the time this was happening, China wasn't really an economic anything. They were still recovering from what was done to them during World War II. Uh, which is, you know, a big deal. But between, with all of these three things, basically, the ultra-rich, the sociopathic among them, who are unfortunately the majority, um, the, the good guy rich people are the exception, unfortunately. Uh, they had no choice. They had nowhere to go except to put the money back into the economy. And that meant that workers uh, had more money to spend. Their businesses had more investments. Um, so the everybody was much more secure, which meant they were more willing to spend money. But they had more money to spend, which meant... They were generating demand for goods and products, which uh, and demand is the ultimate driver of new jobs. Not rich people, but demand. So as soon as the middle class could afford to go out and buy things, you had to have more people hired to make those things and sell those things. And those people, because of the general nature of the, you know, referee. Oh my God! Look at this refereed economy also made good wages, which meant they then could create demand for more goods and more services, and you had this upward, what you call a virtuous cycle, a virtuous uh, circle, you know, um, an upward tailspin as opposed to a downward one. And, and that was, you know, that led to a good economy, and frankly, without, oh my, did you see that? I just saw that. Frankly, without these kind of uh, reforms going into place, the New Deal, we probably would have been so economically sluggish that we would not have been able 
to contend in World War II, and who knows how that could have ended if we hadn't been able to be there and and help out, you know. So, frankly, the New Deal may have saved the world. <laughs> I, I can't say that for sure, but there is a strong possibility. Now, what I'm getting at is, um, which way did I? I'm, I came in from this way, I think. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, here's the path along the edge. I, I don't want to be caught down here in the dark. But, uh... The, the gist is, if you're going to... Th there are two kinds of economy I can think of right now. And the second one might actually sort of be a stretch to call it an economy. But... We are currently in this economic ecosystem where we define people's lives by paychecks can they afford to pay their bills that that's the center of it all do is there anything i can get rid of yes okay and in in the old economy didn't i come oh crap i'm going blind any second now i'm going blind i i came from this way i know i did because i remember carving that here we go. Here we go. Yep, I'm blind. Sorry, folks. Hopefully it's not... There's a couple of twists and turns here. So, basically, in that era, we had lots of Ma and Pa shops. You know, Ma and Pa owned a store, um, and their kids worked there, and, you know, the local... Students worked there, and they made a, you know amount enough to work through school, and it was all relatively good. And then they got out of school, and they went on to bigger and better things. But there were always more students who could uh, fill in. Oh, here we go, you know, fill in that demand. And it was it was pretty healthy. But ever since the re the three, all three have been stripped out. Like, literally, um, tax havens are now present. The top marginal tax brackets are gone. They're very low. In fact, we now have this investor class where you only pay 15% on investment income. And they have found ways of basically redefining all of their personal income as investment income. They sit around, as Tom Hartman likes to sit around the pool collecting their dividend checks and pay very, very low taxes on them, while everyone else paying much higher taxes on actual work. You know, it's, it's a kind of a very unhealthy system, but... All that said, all that said, you know, the tax, we now have tons of tax havens, and all the tariffs have basically been struck out. There are probably some left, but they're ineffectual. Meanwhile, you know, we, we have almost no tariffs against Chinese goods coming into the country, but China has huge tariffs against our goods, so we can't even sell our stuff to China. And, we, and because the ecosystem has gone downhill so fast, we can't even afford things made here. And so all the American-made stuff has gone out of business, and there's just this, this downward pressure uh, brought about by the likes of Walmart and all the other places that have had to follow suit. Now I'm just running in circles, I'm sorry. All these other places have had to follow suit. Uh, you know, so basically the, the, the lack of these refereeships, uh, I'm, I'm calling them for now, have created incentives to abuse labor. The, to create huge high productivity. Everybody's job produces a lot of profit for them. And this is done through paying them as little as possible, making them work as long as possible for as few benefits as possible. And where possible, just getting rid of them entirely and opening up shops somewhere across the border or overseas where people have even lower expectations. And there are fewer protections to keep them safe on the job site and the air clean and all that stuff. Because it is, we have redefined the ecosystem, the economic ecosystem, to prioritize the rich and their earnings. So you've, everybody who does have a job is so productive that there's not enough work to do. And we're literally inventing new jobs that produce nothing of value, you know, uh, working at McDonald's, nobody in their right mind should eat McDonald's food, much less, um, you know, except for the very, you know, very, very poor welfare people 
who have no other option. They can't afford real food. And, and there's no grocery stores in their neighborhood anyways. Just Popeyes and McDonald's and Taco Bell and all that stuff. Things that don't even classify as food and are making them horribly unhealthy and very uh, difficult to ensure, uh, you know, health, health-wise. And, oh, you know, it's, it's such a downward pressure. So the point is, to, to wrap this episode up, I will continue, by the way, because there's a whole other one, uh, the whole other side of this. But if you're going to have a paycheck-centric definition of life, then you have to make sure people have good jobs. And right now, that is not a priority. In fact, doing the exact opposite is the priority because it makes the people at the top, the sociopathic, a lot more money. And unfortunately, high productivity, things like Amazon, uh, which can does really efficient job getting packages and goods to you, means it's done on very few jobs. And what few jobs there are it are kind of stressful, overworked kind of jobs. Just like you know, people in Walmart paid as little as possible. Very efficient operation. They they produce they get goods to people. Uh, they shut every store that opens up shuts down many more stores. For every job that's created at Walmart, several are destroyed. Very efficient but very bad when your equation of defining life is a paycheck. So basically, if you want to define life by a paycheck, you have to ha- allow for or even encourage a certain amount of inefficiency, meaning small shops, mon pa operations. And that's not going to happen as long as we are prioritizing the 1%. So I'll, I'll, I'll use, I'll, that statement will wrap this one up, and I'll come back tomorrow or in you know for me in a few minutes <clears throat> and discuss the other option which actually encourages what i was just describing the uh, high productivity but it means something else has to change and i'll get into that tomorrow all right thanks for listening um kind of on a roll here and I'm, i think i'm able to describe it without too much negativity i mean i obviously have complaints with a certain bracket of the uh, top earners but beyond that It's not gloom and doom, I guess. All right, enough about walking in circles. Thanks for watching.